Hey everybody, I'm TJ with TJ's Magic Touch and today I'll be showing you how to design Tea Party Favors in Microsoft Publisher. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining. Please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And if you are returning, thank you so much for the continued support. I truly appreciate you sticking around as my YouTube family grows. Now let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is select more blank page sizes and then we're going to click on create new page. If you want, you can name your template, but you don't have to. For width, we're going to type in 2.688 and for height, we're going to type in 6.5. I don't like to work with margins. So for this part, I'm going to select zero all the way down. After you have all of your measurements and your new page size, you'll click OK. Make sure that you have it selected and then you'll go over to the right hand side and click Create. This will open up a new publication in Publisher. Today I'll be using clip art and digital papers that I found on Creative Fabrica. If you like any of the images that I've used today, I will leave a link below in the description box so that you can go and check them out yourself. Now let's get into this design. Before I start designing, I like to add my ruler marks to my workspace. So I'll start by adding them left to right and then top to bottom. Having the markings on the page just kind of help me guide where I want my clip arts and papers to go. And I know where not to place them so that the image isn't cut off when I print or when I'm cutting and crimping myself. Down here in the bottom left hand corner is where you'll look at to see that your markings are being placed where you want them to be placed on the screen. Now that I have my markings where I want them to be, I'll go to page design background scroll down to more backgrounds I will click on picture or texture fill and then insert picture you can choose where you want your pictures to come from I am choosing from the files that I showed you earlier so I'm going to scroll down and choose the digital paper that I like for this design click insert and that digital paper will pop into the background of my template Now that I have my background set up, I'm going to add the clip art that I want to use. So I click on insert and pictures. While holding the control key, I will scroll and click on the pictures that I want to drop into my workspace. So as I go through and click the pictures, I'm holding down the control key. I'm going to click insert and all of those images will pop up to the right of the screen. Now that I have my clip art on the screen, I'm just gonna click off to the side so that they're not all highlighted anymore. And then I'll start with the first image that I wanna drop onto my template. I'm gonna right click, copy it, right click, paste. Then right click the image again to format the picture. Click on recolor and change the color of the image to white. This allows me to put a stroke or an outline, if you will, behind my clip art since I don't actually have the ability to add an outline in Publisher. It's a little bit of extra work. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And then I'll just mess around with the rest of the images until they all kind of have this same effect with the stroke or outline technique.
after I get the image where I want it to be, I'll take both of the clip arts and I will group them together. That way I can move everything cohesively and I can resize without having to resize them separately and go through the process all over again. Right here, I wanted to add a shadow to the background of the image. So I separated the two images and I went to shape effects to format the picture. That way I can add a shadow to the background. After adding the shadow, I then dropped the image with the color back on top of it. And it just changed the overall look of the actual clip art. Now I'm going to do the same technique with the rest of the clip art until I have the image looking how I want it to look. For the back of the tea wrapper, I'm going to add a circle so that I can add the florals around it. So I'll go to insert and shapes. I'll draw out the circle that I want onto the back of the wrapper and then I'll format the shape so that it looks the way that I want it to look. And in order to do that, I will place the circle where I want it on the template. I'll go to shape fill, change the color to white, and then I'll go to shape outline. For this part, you can either select shape outline white or shape outline none. I chose to do white. Now to give my circle some dimension, under the format tab, I'll go to shape effects. I will add a shadow to the back of the circle, as well as click on shape effects in order to bevel it. Beveling it allows me to give it like a 3D look so that the circle kind of sits up off of the template and doesn't so much blend in. After getting my circle to look how I want it to look, I'll go back to the same technique of before of dropping my clip art in after copying, pasting, making the second one white and just adjusting it on the screen until everything looks the way that I want it to look. Now I'm going to add my text at the top and in order to do that I'm going to insert word art and start typing my text into the word art box. After I have my text typed I will go and select the font that I want to use and click OK. After my font or my word art is on the screen, it popped in a little stretched. I'm guessing it's because of the type of font it is. That's another thing you have to be um, cognizant of when working in publishers. Sometimes the fonts will drop in stretched. Sometimes they may even drop in blurry and they can't be used for your project. So I just adjust it until that it looks the way that I want it to look. And then I'll place it on top of the image.
once I finish manipulating the text, I'll right click copy, right click paste. Up in the top left hand corner, I'll click on edit text. This makes the text box pop back up and then I'm able to change the words of the text so that I have to continuously go in, insert word art, change word art. I'll just continue that process until all of the words that I want on the design is on the screen. Since this design has to be folded in half, all of the images on the back need to be flipped upside down. So I'll select and highlight everything, group them together, and then I'll rotate the entire image upside down and then adjust it within my ruler marks so that when I print it out and fold it in half, both sides will have images that are the right side up. Now I'm ready for print. So I'm gonna select file and new, and then I'll click on 11 by eight and a half. This gives me a paper setup in landscape mode and allows me to print three per sheet. I'll go to page design and select none for my margins. Then I'll go back to my original design. I'll save it first, and then I'll go back and save it as a JPEG. That way I can drop that image onto my print sheet. After saving the image, I'll go back to my second sheet, insert pictures, and then I'll pop the picture onto the screen, right click copy, right click paste until I have three tea bags on the paper. After I have my sheet set up, I'll go to File, Save As, and I'll save it as a PDF. Once it's saved as a PDF, it pops right onto the screen for print. For assembly, you'll need your printed out design, a pair of scissors, double-sided tape like this AdTech tape runner, as well as your tea bags. Once you cut out your design, you'll fold the wrapper in half, place the tea bag in the center, and then you'll go around the top three edges with your tape runner. That's all you need to seal. If you'd like, you can crimp the ends to give the tea bag just that one final touch. Okay everybody, that is it for this video. Please do not forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. I would love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Also, if you are interested in seeing this tutorial in Microsoft Word, I will leave a link down below to a video done by another YouTuber that I have collabed with once again, Andrina's Creations LLC. I will also leave the links to our other two videos where we have done this design in Photoshop as well as Silhouette Studio. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next time, bye guys.